Thank you very much for, for joining us. Um, just come off the uh, the panel discussion about um, client engagement and things like that. So I'm just talk us through what it was that you, you decided to say. My main point was about really the difficulty of bringing clients and contractors together. So we talk a lot as from a contractor perspective about how difficult it is to be a good contractor. Um, but we don't really explain that enough to the client. So the client doesn't understand the problem the contractor's got. The contractor doesn't understand the problem the client has got. Uh, and so there's no meeting of minds there. And that is the way that you get projects which run over, which are too expensive, where there's scope creep, all the bad things about bad projects. Yeah, I mean, this idea of the intelligent client is a very uh, is a very important one. And I wonder if you could expand on, on the benefits that you would actually see if we could really just increase the levels of engagement and, and intelligence within the client organisations? Well, I think there's two really important respects in which it's very hard, in fact, to be an intelligent client. Yeah, it sounds easy. It's a very difficult thing to do. Because um, an intelligent client needs to do two things. The, the client needs to know exactly what it is they're trying to get out of the project or programme or whatever it is. And quite often that's an evolving picture for themselves as the thing goes on. They learn about what it is they're trying to do. Secondly, they have to understand what the constraints are on actually being able to deliver that. So they need to know as much as the contractors, but of course they don't. So the challenge for the client is how to, if you like, pool the intelligence, not only of itself, but also with contractor engagement, and that's why I think early, early contractor involvement is important, to enable you to get that kind of balance between what's the most effective way of delivering something and also understanding what the something is you're trying to deliver so that you can evolve both the vision that you've got and the way of delivering it into something really powerful. Well, thank you for that. Um, and uh, um, changing tack slightly, you were obviously our uh, keynote speaker last night at the uh, CEO of the Year Awards. Uh, how did you find that event? Oh, that was great fun. Uh, it was a terrific event and a lot of very good people. The awards ceremonies were inspiring, you know, hearing about all the people running these companies, um, but also to be in a room where people are passionate about infrastructure. That always is, is exciting for somebody like me who is passionate about infrastructure. Excellent. And, and you're, you obviously sit on the, the National Infrastructure Commission. Um, what are you looking forward to getting your teeth into next in terms of potential studies or areas of particular interest for you? I think my area of particular of interest is obviously on the transport side for a start because I've been in transport for a long while but more generally on how we make decisions about this stuff. How do we decide what's important? What are the methods of evaluation and appraisal we might use to think about what we're going to invest in now, which will be around in 50 years time or even 100 years time, um, uh, in an uncertain world where we don't know what it's, we never know what it's going to be like in 50 years time, but we still have to make a decision now. How do you think about that? That is one of the things that really, that gets me out of bed in the morning. Sounds to me like you're interested in perhaps looking a little bit at the Treasury Green Book and uh, maybe... I really don't that. enjoy looking at the Treasury Green Book. I try not to. I try to put that on one side. I've fought my way past a um, web tag evaluation in transport, for that matter, uh, trying to make broader-based decisions about real value and, and uh, economic growth and society, uh, society's well-being. And that's actually what infrastructure should be about, I think.